was considering what uh, kind of discussion we had yesterday from the major mobile operators in the region, especially for the point of the uh, liberalized market and the definition of the uh, liberalization of the telecom market. And the point of view of the mobile operators that it's mainly comes from the uh, mobile subscribers growth. So I think what I've done, I followed their definition by giving a telecom market overview here in Jordan and talk about the liberalized market known in the Middle East as the most liberalized telecommunication markets in the MENA region. To be honest with you, based on the discussion I heard yesterday, we should divide the definition between two telecom markets, the internet markets and mobile markets, in order to have a clear view. About Jordan, Jordan used to have two mobile licenses in year 2000, coupled with one fixed and international service provider expanding to a total of 77 licenses to date with only three mobile licenses, five WiMAX licenses, and the balance to vary between individual licenses and class C licenses. The three mobile service providers in Jordan achieved remarkable growth during the last six years, mainly by expanding overall market penetration from 26% at the start of 2005 to reach 108 by the end of 2010. Looking into the other market and the growth in the internet market in Jordan the last six years, we will see the overall internet penetration has witnessed a fair growth during the last five years. However, Jordan is still lagging behind in broadband internet usage compared to mobile. To share, to share with you some statistics about the market in Jordan, we will see, for example, in the last, starting from 2005 until 2010, and see the size of investments in telecom sector in general, divided between the internet, the mobile, and the proper line. We will see that the major investments was used to be allocated for uh, the mobile sector in 2005, 2006, 2007. In 2008, we start seeing more investments coming to the internet market. Unfortunately, the growth on the size of the investments in the internet market has not showed a high internet usage uh, as we can see uh, in the first graph. In the first graph, we see a penetration in the mobile market that exceeded 100%, but for the internet market, despite the double investments in that market in the last three years, we still see a fair growth that does not match with the size of the investments that has been allocated for the internet market. This panel is about what's happening in the Arab world, broadband-wise, what's happening in the Arab world uh, from a media perspective, given the, the major changes uh, with mobile broadband adoption and uh, FTTH deployments uh, and so on. And of course, uh, the big buzz in the Arab Spring is social media, so we'll also touch on that. How can we use broadband as a tool for plugging women into community? I think it's very important uh, not to underestimate the importance of broadband into really uh, giving the woman the access to information and to have a more economic participation through being connected. Um, we totally understand that broadband is a unique medium for women. Uh, it connects them to a stunning array of resources, uh, outreach to a wide network of friends and family, uh, they can ask for consultation, for counseling, they can uh, find jobs, they can look for opportunities, obtain training, and sometimes address health issues, and sometimes they look for financial, uh, let's say, support. 
Uh, that's why I think it's very important to uh, look at this opportunity for broadband into plugging women into community and increase, increase their participation into being more engaged in civic affairs and into community. I'm going to uh, shy away to a more conservative uh, topic. <laughs> While I agree fully with uh, uh, Mrs. Majd on it, I think uh, definitely that's uh, something that we need to uh, increase more as an industry participation of women in, uh, in the sector. Uh, what I want to talk about now is the other side, the driver of broadband. We've talked a lot about access, we've talked about technologies, how do we make this available uh, to everybody at very competitive prices. The other secondary driver that I want to talk about is content, uh, fostering a uh, comprehensive content ecosystem, uh, not just across mobile. Uh, uh, Dr. Othman yesterday was talking about the three screens, and yes, there are three screens. There's TV, there's online, there's uh, mobile. I think uh, while TV is probably quite ahead, uh, the online and the uh, mobile world have yet to, um, to catch up. Um, you see, you've seen uh, a resurgence of uh, online sites uh, creep across uh, some of the uh, uh, Arabic online world. I don't think uh, it's enough yet to provide the uh, usage that is needed uh, or the stickiness that is needed for uh, people to adopt broadband. I think there has to be a major investment in that area. Um, s most of the content, again, that people are consuming <coughs> range from the very uh, popular YouTube and Facebook and social networking sites, which are, again, westernized and not localized to our region. Since the morning yesterday, uh, something occurred to me, uh, a resemblance between the telecom and broadband industries into the shipping industries. Uh, there is a resemblance there. Today, shipping, you have a container, and uh, the, the price that you pay for shipping that container does not really depend on what's in it. And the second resemblance I see is that the revenue uh, in the shipping industry goes more to the port rather than the shipping line. And I think this is the situation today with telecom. <clears throat> we have a pipe that is full of bits, and uh, revenue is not really coming uh, to the carriers, to those who carry the, the, this data, uh, i.e. the mobile operators. And I think this resemblance should teach us something, should teach us to change the way we are doing business for the future. And maybe uh, I would touch upon what I, what, what I think the future is going to be from a mobile operator perspective, if, if you allow me, Jawad. I think we need to change the ways in, in three, three different areas. One is how we develop our networks and how we manage the value chain of the customer. Today, if you see across the region, there's fragmented value chain of the, the customer value chain. We speak about high-speed internet, we speak about content and services, etc. but at the end of the day, we are really, in basic terms, providing connectivity with almost a price war or reaching eight JDs per connection, uh, I don't think that is the way forward and that, that, that does entice operators to upgrade uh, their networks to meet the actual integrated value chain of the customer. There has been a study by Morgan Stanley that says operators might have to invest two times their current revenue to upgrade their networks to developed countries' standard. And that is, that is something that we need to uh, take care of as, as operators. How do we match our networks into the value chain of our customers? And the situation in Jordan is certainly different to the situation in Saudi and other, uh, other countries. I will speak from media and content background. And, uh, as a media person, uh, I have a different perception of content. We look at content as substance. We look at... Um, in the media industry had uh, a free flow of information that happened in the 90s and this decade, uh, the last decade, uh, on the web that has been a major driver of the growth of, uh, of the whole network and the usage and all the user habits. The long-term business uh, plans that happened in the US when the websites were launched contributed to free services, free content, and fast growth and that also contributed to the growth of investment. Um, I want to talk about a, a simple problem. 
related to content on, on digital uh, broadband, which is, I think, everybody is aware of it. <coughs> it happened because of the flow of information and so many people involved in creating content on the web, which is basically the problem of fragmentation. As we know, um, the, digital, the digital environment, uh, the revolution of information has created a situation where so many thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people creating pieces of content. These units of content could be videos, could be channels on YouTube, could be blogs, could be news, could be anything that we consume on, the, on broadband through PCs or through mobile handsets. This fragmentation uh, uh, has created a very long tail uh, of content providers. And um, I will talk about the implications of that, but the solution came to this as, as uh, aggregation. So the aggregation of the fragmented, aggregation of the experience, the websites who were able to do this, fra this um, aggregation, like uh, where they started with Amazon or Netflix, as Anderson, who wrote the book in 2004 uh, 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 about long tail, he talked about selling less quantities of more items and new business models has started. And then we saw YouTube and other websites.